Historic Formula Junior, the first race of the Classic at Silverstone in 2021, is about to get underway. The grid comes around the final turn as we wait for it all to go green. And it is going to be Cam Jackson who leads away from Pierre Livingston. And it's a good start from Cam Jackson. He's able to take the line pretty much into Abbey Corner. And the rest of the field now comes shooting through some side-by-side -side action as they come through Abbey. But all clean so far. And this full, full grid of 27 rows of cars are now well on their way. Good battle going on for second. But Cam Jackson has definitely taken the advantage there. Pierre Livingston has dropped down to third place under a bit of attack, so Cam Jackson taking full advantage. And a tremendous start there from Cam Jackson. Pierre Livingston had a little look round the outside, but uh, wasn't able to get ahead, and now he's lost that place to... Uh, oh, the... we've got a spinner in the background. Uh, I think it was the number 55 car that had the spin. Is that Lucas Elusa? Uh, so he's uh, lost it. Meanwhile, Pierre's trying to come back into second place. I'm not sure it's going to work for him just yet. Coming through into Luffield's corner now. And still Cap Jackson pulling out quite a big advantage here. Look at the way he runs it right over the curb to make sure that he gets a good draft. Looking at uh, Wilson also doing a good job. He, yes, he's in fourth place. It's Richard Bradley who's got up to second ahead of Pierre Livingston. And, uh, and to Sam, I think actually Sam is in fifth place now as they come through Cop's corner. He's getting very sideways. That's Adrian Russell going well in the number 122 car. Uh, Russell currently running in seventh uh, position. But it is Cam Jackson who is leading this race so far. And now coming under, yeah, a little bit more pressure, there's no doubt. So Richard Bradley doing well. He's moved up for third place on the grid in the number 81 car. And he is chasing him down very, very effectively in another of the Brabham. BT2. So you've got pretty much identical cars as off as Roger Dexter. Oh, that's a shame. Whether the he went off or whether there was a problem with the car. He had a problem yesterday actually with that car. So whether it's repeated, I'm not too sure. Pierre yeah, Livingston coming under increasing pressure once again from Alex Ames now in the number 88 car. Doesn't quite work out. And it's still Cam Jackson who has the advantage right now from Bradley in second place who moved up well at the start. Just getting going a bit more now, it's just though he's feeling a bit more confident. But Jackson has the lead as they, they come across the line. So the data coming up on the screen, not right at the moment. For some reason, the uh, order that you're seeing on the screen uh, is not actually correct. Yeah, Cam Jackson's transponder isn't working, so uh, he will get slotted in shortly. Yeah, so we'll keep an eye on the order up front. Cam Jackson has the advantage, the man who took that pole position. There we are, Bradley, the order being shown up a little bit more accurately now. Bradley in second place, Livingston in third, Alex Ames in fourth place, and putting Livingston under some pressure there for that third position. Well, it's a uh, weekend, of course, of Olympics going on, so we're not just thinking about the winners of the gold, we're thinking about silver and bronze as well, and the battle for bronze is definitely going on here. A good attack from Alex Ames trying to go around the outside into Brooklyn, but I don't think that's going to come off. No, that's a very difficult place to overtake, but uh, often works if you can get wide round Brooklyn and then get a tight line for Luffy where they are now, and then uh, take the inside for the exit into Woodcut and then the long run down to Cops, but that didn't work for the fourth place car. He didn't quite get through, but uh, still Cam Jackson leading from Richard Bradley. Pierre Livingston, very experienced in Formula Four, but this is one of his very early races in Formula Junior, if not his first. I think something you've noticed uh, here, Alistair, is that the mid-engine car, now it's dried up, it was, it was wetter yesterday, now it's dried up because the mid-engine car has got a bit more of an advantage. The front-engine cars have dropped back a little bit, haven't they? Uh, Chris Drake is back down to his uh, 11th place. We've got uh, Ray Malik's dropped down to 17th position. Uh, he had qualified in 9th. Yes, the, uh, the grip in the wet yesterday, very different indeed to what we're seeing today. It wasn't totally wet when they qualified, it was uh, but very damp, nothing like today. So now it's much drier and Cam Jackson is taking full advantage of that. He did a, a 2 minute 22 on that uh, opening lap. Let's see how the lap times come together. The car weaves a little bit, under braking as he goes into stow. You can see the action on the steering wheel as he gently feeds it into the corner and then uh, gets on the power nice and early. Let's watch him into the left and right. This is a slightly different setup here to the Formula One cars. It's a more open left-right. They don't have to brake quite so hard into the left-hander. 
and those four cars holding good close uh, competition and actually that was a little mistake there and there's a battle for the lead Bradley now has got a chance to come up the inside and Bradley has taken the lead from Cam Jackson who made a little error out of club corner but he might well come back he's got a decent run as they come through farm up towards the tight right at village they're absolutely side by side wonderful racing Jackson just nips back in front Cam Jackson gets ahead once more but Richard uh, Bradley is still trying to fight his way back Wonderful, wonderful racing. And, and Bradley got a little bit sideways there in the loop as he came out. Now they're going through Aintree. Long run now down to Brooklands, down the Wellington Straight. Bradley oh, very, oh. very wide. Uh, yeah. So he'll be looking for a good slipstream now down the Wellington Straight. But look at Pierre Livingston as well. Don't count him out. No, that was good. He held that well. That's a little look down the inside to Brooklands. We left that a bit too late. That was probably uh, an error. He will lose a length or two to Cam Jackson, who drove that beautifully there into Luffield Corner. This is a close battle, isn't it? And what a great start to the classic here at Silverstone as we all enjoy seeing some older racing cars going absolutely flat out. Enjoy the Junior cars from the late 50s are fighting so hard it's allowing the third and fourth place cars to keep with them as they come down the long straight once again and look at the way that they're trying to keep in the slipstream until the last possible moment as Bradley dives out but uh, doesn't get through at Stoke Corner. No but it was down at Club Corner that it always oh, went a little bit wide there but he has got a bit too quick in there Cam Jackson. Oh can he get it back? Not quite let's see and now he's got the line into Club Corner but Richard Bradley, very, very smooth. Now, let's see on the exit. This was where Cam Jackson got it a little bit wrong last time. Very good exit once again from Richard Bradley. He's using a slightly tighter line, but this time Jackson doesn't make the error. In the background, you still got a battle for third place as well. So it is Cam Jackson just in front. We've got 12 and three-quarter minutes still to go in this Formula Junior race, which is proving to be a wonderful battle up front. Alex Ames has just taken fastest lap. He's running in fourth. Chasing after Pierre Livingston, it's a Brabham 1-2 at the moment. Into Village and then up to the very tight left-hander at the loop. Uh, Richard Bradley thinks about a tight line through on the inside of Cameron Jackson, but no room to get through there. Cam Jackson gets a good drive out through the left-hander at Aintree, which leads on to the Wellington Strait. Bradley goes a little wide again. They all weave around as they come down the long Wellington Strait. Uh, Cam Jackson feels secure enough to take the racing line, not defending as he goes into Brooklands. Lotus 27 in third place and then another Brabham in fourth place. Oh, it's a spin for Pierre Livingston. What a shame, the Lotus of Pierre just got the back end out of shape. He's going down into Brooklyn's breaking maybe a little bit too late. Oh, and he's thrown away a potential podium finish and that's given Alex Ames third place. And now Ames got the pace setter on that last lap. But Alex could well get on terms with these uh, two others of Cam Jackson and Richard Bradley. And Livingston gets going again. There's a little shake of the head. It looked like he just lost it on the brakes there, didn't it? As he was braking for Brooklyn's, the back end stepped out, wasn't able to control it. That just shows you how hard these drivers are trying. As they went uh, down into that tight right hand. And now we're up at Beckett's corner. The sweepers at Beckett's reckon to be the greatest sequence of corners in the whole of the world for Grand Prix racing at the moment. And uh, they're just lapping a slower car. There's Cam Jackson, who passes the slower car on the right hand side of the hangar straight. And Richard Bradley follows him through right in the slipstream there. I wonder whether Bradley will have another go into Stowe Corner. We'll have a look. Uh, Alex Ames has dropped back a little bit, actually, on the track. That's funny because I thought he was going to catch up. He made a mistake somewhere. Uh, so, really, now it's down to these two to battle for the lead. And Alex is going to have to get his focus back because he has lost a bit of time. As we know, Livingston has dropped well down the order. When they come over the line next time, we'll see just how far he's got back. Um, right out of it, but he's, uh, he's definitely not going to the struggle to anywhere near a podium finish now. So it is still Jackson who leads with Richard Bradley chasing hard. Alex Ames having set the fastest lap on the previous lap. This time it the fastest lap now goes to Cam Jackson, our race leader. And 
it means that Ames is now up into third. We've got Sam Wilson that has moved up into fourth after the uh, spin for Livingston. And uh, also moving up the order as a result of that, the number four car of Andrew Hibbard. And Livingston dropping down the order as, uh, of course, cars overtook. Hit sideways there from Cam Jackson as he came through the loop and uh, now through eight three corner. And again, this is where we know the exit is absolutely crucial. Glasses in his mirrors. He knows he's got a car length or so over Richard Bradley. I don't think Bradley's close enough to attack on the approach to Brooklands this time. But no, he follows his through. Yes, uh, feels confident to stay on the racing line, the, the wide entry into the corner. Now he's going through Luffy, and he's got some slower cars to deal with. And this is going to be the whole of, uh, whole of the, uh, the weekend. We're going to see a lot of lapping of cars with such huge grids. So uh, already they're into the slower tail enders, uh, passing through there on the inside of Woodcut on the way up to Cops Corner now. And you can see Bradley right in the wheel tracks of Cameron Jackson as they turn in to that fast right hander at Cops Corner. Now the rise up towards Maggots. So a wonderful shot here as they go over the crest and into Maggots. Yeah, but the pressure is still on Cam Jackson. He cannot afford to make any mistakes because the gap is pretty tiny. Bradley slide into that first part of the sequence of left and right handers. This S sequence is famous at Silverstone, one of, the most, one of the most wonderful parts of the track. And actually, I think that it's a good exit from Bradley there. He's got a bit of a toe as they head down the hander straight. And you can see that Cam is checking his mirrors. Which way is Bradley going to go? He covers the inside, so Bradley forced to play the outside, but then he tries the old Mansell PK trick of going back to the inside. Doesn't quite work for him, especially when they've got a car to lap as well. Although, no, nearly sideways through the toe corner. It doesn't quite happen there either. What a, a great move from Richard Bradley. A, a, an absolute copy of uh, Mansell's effort on PK all those years ago. Now they're in club corner and they've got a slower car. Oh, this, this is, is split them. Yes, a chance for Bradley. Side by side on two race contenders here. Cam Jackson on the outside, on the right as you look at it here, and on the inside now Richard Bradley into Abbey Corner, they're coming up towards us, Bradley turns in, Cam Jackson stays with him, and Bradley's got in front. Richard Bradley in front, can he hold on to the lead now? Cam Jackson is the one who's going to go on the attack. Absolutely classic move there from Richard Bradley, both such experienced drivers, totally respect for each other as well, both watching where the other is, now they're coming up to the tight left-hander at the loop, Bradley leads from Jackson, Jackson looking for a slightly tighter line in the hope that he can get a good run down the Wellington Strait, see how he's going wider through Aintree, that's a faster line and that might give him a little bit more speed as they come up behind slower cars, so they've got to lap two cars before they get down to Brooklyn. Bradley decides to go to the inside, and Jackson follows him through. Yeah, that is the slower cars will give opportunities, as you say, there's no doubt about it. A wonderful shot of Cam Jackson working away at the steering wheel, trying to get back on turns. These are pretty much identical cars, they're both the Brabham DT2, one of the later uh, cars of Formula Junior, 1962 cars with their 1100cc uh, engines. They are charging along at the moment, doing a fantastic job. Last lap was a 2 minute 21, I believe that that's a new lap record actually in the past. Uh, two, two But great uh, battle going on between the top two. Ames has dropped back a little bit in third now. He's come three seconds behind these two. Sam Wilson up into fourth position. And uh, then the rest of them coming through. Mike Richards has made up a little bit of progress in the number 194 car. He's up to sixth place now. Uh, he qualified reasonably well. Well, he's still in tenth place, so Clive has made some progress. But here we are then. A bit of weaving around to look like a bit like Max Verstappen uh, recently doing. A bit of weaving down the straight just to avoid. And Cam Jackson has to think about going for the inside line into Stone. He gets back out of it but tries to get an exit out of the corner. But Bradley dealt with that well actually. Very deep through Stone. Down into the dip at the Vale. Now we've got the left hander at Club Corner and it's the uh, what we call the, the historic uh, club because it's not quite as tight as the Grand Prix Club Corner. Absolutely perfect through there. Jackson takes a wide. Oh, Jackson loses a little bit of control there, slides out onto the curbing, and that's actually lost him probably as much as about half a second on Richard Bradley. And in this particular race, half a second is a lot. 
Uh, they've been so close and we can see them now coming through up towards Village, the tight right-hander, and now Richard Bradley has a relatively commanding lead. Yeah, that was a mistake. Same corner as he made a little error earlier, so uh, I don't know if he's hitting some damp sections. Uh, Richard Bradley seems to be getting through club, finding the grip just a little bit more than Cam Jackson through that area. But don't, um, don't count it out because Cam Jackson does have the fastest lap. He is mega quick and he just needs to string it all together. And again, as they deal with traffic, that may well give him an opportunity. Although this bit of traffic, Bradley dealt with perfectly because he's done it before they go into the but actually I think Cam Jackson may lose out a little bit through the left-hander here, trying to get past those slower cars at the same time. Uh, yeah, he's definitely, uh, he's just cost him again a little bit more time. Bradley has been over, able to open up the advantage a touch more. It's Bradley in command with four and three quarter minutes to go in the Formula Junior race here at Silverstone. Start of an amazing weekend of motor racing at the Classic. We are going to enjoy more of this kind of action, I am sure, with some very different kinds of cars. But right now, we can see these beautiful, delicate little single-seater cars from the late 1950s and early 1960s which are immaculately prepared by their owners and they're driven flat out as we have seen up front with certainly Richard Bradley and Cam Jackson putting on a tremendous display of car control and late braking and racing side by side but it's Bradley who has just taken the advantage over this last lap and has pulled out a decent lead. And I noticed there Cam Jackson uh, got uh, a, a slower car to overtake just in the middle of Beckett's corner, which wasn't ideal for him, whereas Bradley managed to get through before, so another few tenths lost there, but uh, hopefully Cameron Jackson can gradually ease up onto the back of Richard Bradley in the last three and a half minutes of the race and maybe make a challenge as they come into club corner and uh, come round to complete another lap. Yeah, another lap to go. And if you want to get in touch, uh, do please, if you've got any information, if you're here at Silverson, if you see something that we haven't seen, uh, use my Twitter, at Ben Edwards TV, and uh, send me a little message. I'll try and keep an eye on what's going on. You can tell me if you see something I haven't seen, or you're enjoying something. Christian Rose has said, if you're not watching the opening race of the Classic at Silverstone, you're missing out. Incredible battle for the lead in the Formula Junior race. You're absolutely right, Christian. Uh, it is, has been a great battle, although it has eased off just a little bit now with Richard Bradley having taken that advantage from Cam Jackson. Um, the gap, 2.4 seconds have driven over the line. Annie Zane is in third place. Then Sam Wilson in fourth position. Number four car of Andy Hibbert up there in fifth place. Mike Richards up in sixth position. Behind him, we've got the number six, two car of Simon Diffie. of cars and what's so wonderful about love, historic and classic racing you've got some very talented drivers up front and you've got some real enthusiasts who just love their cars they may not be the fastest drivers in the world they just love to get that car out on track and have a little play with it and that's what we're seeing all throughout this weekend well we're seeing Richard Bradley there go into Fox Corner you can see Cam Jackson in the background it doesn't look as though he's lost any ground, but uh, whether he can make up the difference, there he is now, you can see the orange uh, paint on the no on the tail of uh, Cam Jackson's car as they turn into Beckett, what a lovely shot there, with Richard Bradley just drifting the car through, just slightly sliding all the way through, on the power and on the steering, and coming through Beckett's corner now, up towards Chapel, onto the long hangar straight again. There's Cam Jackson right behind him. I think he's a little closer, Ben. Yeah, I think he may be just a little closer. This is a good battle going on. Just had a message from uh, Ben Meludi saying, what's with the traffic getting in today? It's, I've been stationary for a while. Uh, I think ben, it's because there's so many people coming in. It's going to be a big crowd today. Uh, not much I can do about that, I'm afraid, as I talk to you about the motor racing. Um, but I'm glad that we are going to see plenty of people here today. Uh, obviously, everyone's arriving at the same time. But don't worry, there's... We've got 12 hours of racing here today. Uh, you'll be in time for some great action yourself. Bradley, how's he getting on? Good lap there. 
a very good lap, yeah, and uh, we're going on to the last Although lap Jackson, now. Jackson, yeah, Jackson's just taken yeah. the fastest lap again. The gaps, can you right? The gaps come down to 1.4 seconds. And one lap to go, so uh, we've got uh, uh, around uh, two minutes and 20 seconds to go in the race uh, for one lap of the race for Richard Bradley and Cam Jackson as they come up to the right-hander at Village, then the short run to the loop, and you can see there the two cars in the shot, and uh, Cam Jackson definitely getting closer. He's really got his head down and... Uh, focusing entirely on trying to catch Richard Bradley ahead of him as they go through Aintree onto the long Wellington straight. I'm, I'm not sure Jackson's close enough to be getting much of an aerodynamic toe there, but he'll be doing everything he can. And he can also see that Bradley's got to deal with some traffic down here. Yeah, long traffic, sometimes that is good, sometimes bad. He's definitely getting a little closer, as you say. I think he's doing a, a great job there. We've got a uh, good battle going on uh, in, uh, down the order between some of these slower cars as well, but it's about the race lead because the time is ticking away. The clock is about to go to zero, and the checker flag will be coming out at the end of this lap. So, Pam Jackson, can he close up the gap any further as they try and get past these uh, other cars? In the middle of it there, at the uh, number 114 car, getting it out of the way, doing a good job, but it's the leaders who are still battling hard. The triple one, that's Nick Taylor in the Alpha that they're overtaking now, another of the front engine machines. But it's not helping Cam Jackson, is it? Because he's lost again a little bit of performance. A bit sideways there from Richard Bradley. He's balancing it beautifully. I think uh, the slower cars there through Cops really did for Cam Jackson's effort on this last lap because he just got caught behind another car. The other car couldn't just jump out of the way, so uh, there's not, nothing he could do about it. But we can see now the gap hasn't uh, gone down anymore as they come down the hangar straight towards Stoke Corner for the last time. Yeah, what a great drive this has been from Richard Bradley. He qualified third on the grid in the damp session that we saw yesterday. But he has had tremendous pace and performance in the dry today after a wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle going on with Cam Jackson throughout. He's just got to deal with the final corner, and out of club corner he comes, wrapping another machine. Richard Bradley takes the first win of the Classic of 2021, and look at what that means to him, punching the air with delight, as he has come home after a tremendous race with Cam Jackson. Big thumbs up, and Cam congratulating him. Wonderful to see, that is just the sort of most ball we have. And uh, the gap at the end, 1.7 seconds, with Cam Jackson having set the fastest lap of the race, just a couple of times, minimal errors, but it was enough for Richard Bradley to take the victory in the end. And Alex A finished in third place, having qualified fifth. That's a good effort from Alex to come home in third position. You know, I, I was pushing as hard as I dared to push, I promise you, and that, it, it was excellent. I think it was tricky conditions, obviously, with some of the track being damp. Um, I think my car came very strong at the end. It was a, a little bit off at the beginning, but no, that was just awesome. Really, really good fun. Yeah, great race. On to Cam Jackson. And Cam, you seem to be gaining a bit at the end. Are you hoping for a few more laps, maybe? Yeah, yeah, one lap would have been nice. But uh, yeah, I, I, I was catching a little bit and then caught a back mark going to Beckett on the last lap. So uh, I, uh, yeah, sort of scuffed any chance of getting in uh, in the toe. But it was a really good race. It was really good fun. It was awesome. Right, on to Alex. Alex, a fantastic race for you. I think you had a bit of a moment which made you drop back. Yeah, I had, a, I had a bit of a, I hit a massive dump patch for each church and uh, completely off the track on the grass and it's like I lost a massive amount of time and uh, couldn't really pull it back. Then Cameron started dropping back a bit, but we had, I caught some back markers really badly and unfortunately, which made sure he dropped back, but really happy with third. Uh, it was a great race in tricky conditions. Congratulations to all Thank of you, you. and well done.